So first, let's start with two examples where we can actually replace the while loop with a for loop, and it would be better to do so. So in this function, we take two parameters, data, which is a list. Notice I haven't said a list of what, so this could be a heterogeneous list, and then some object. I haven't said what type this object is. So once again, this object could be of any type. And this returns an integer. And as the name suggests, we are going to count something, some frequency. So there is no doc string here to help us. But what this function is supposed to do will become very clear when we read the body of the code. Immediately, we see something that looks like the accumulator pattern, although there's no for loop here. We are initializing this accumulator variable result to zero. And then if some condition is true, we are increasing that accumulator by one. And finally, we are returning that result. Now, what do we do? We initialize i to zero. And while i is less than the length of this list, remember the indices are numbered zero to one minus the length of the string. So while i is less than the length of this uh, list, Check if data i is object. The is operator checks if this object and this object are precisely the same object. We're not using equality because equality will check if two objects have the same value. They need not be the same object. But here we are checking if this object is precisely the same as the object that appears at the ith element in this list. And if it is, we increase the result by one. So this function seems to be counting how often this object appears in this list. How often this precise object appears in this list, not just another object with the same value as the given one. Now, our friend is paying close attention to this code, and they realize something very, very important. And this is actually one of the dangers of using while loops. Our friend points out that this while loop is potentially infinite. In particular, if the given list data is non-empty, let us say it has length 3, then we will come in here. This condition will be true because i is initialized to 0, and 0 is less than 3, the length of this list. But what would happen here? Well, we would check this condition. If it is true, we would increase result by 1, and then we would go back up. But we haven't modified i. i is still 0, and that's still less than the length, so we will do this again and we will do this again. And we will do this regardless of whether this if condition is true or not. We will always either come into this if condition or skip past it. But since we are not modifying i, this is an infinite loop. Now, a friend is being very, very precise here. Unless, of course, data is the empty list. If data is the empty list, then length of data is 0. And we initialized i to 0. And 0 is not strictly less than 0. So what would happen then? We would skip past and return result, which is 0. So in that case, in the case where the list is empty, this function would actually work. And it would not be an infinite loop. But for every non-empty list, we would hit an infinite loop. Now, if we actually wrote this code and we pressed Enter, our generative AI would remind us that we have to increase the value of i by 1. But again, pay close attention. Our friend has noticed that we still might have an infinite loop. Why would this happen? Well, imagine we have a non-empty list. And let us say this object does not appear in that list. We would initialize result to 0 we would initialize i to 0. And since this is a non-empty list, this condition 0 less than length of the list will be true. We would come in here. We would check if data 0 is object. And based on what we have assumed, that condition would be false. 
So we will skip past this and there are no more statements in the body of this while loop. So we would jump back to the top and again we have not updated the value of i. The value of i is inside this if condition. So it is badly indented and that is what our friend is pointing out. So do you see how tricky it can be to write a while loop correctly? I have been programming for quite some time and I often find myself accidentally writing infinite while loops. So it's much better to try and write a for loop if you can. You don't have to manually control the iteration of your loop. We know how to write this code using a for loop. It's quite simple. So for example, for each item in data, if that item is the object, well, increase the result by one. And this will produce the correct code. It's much easier to read, it's much easier to reason about, and it's far more likely to be correct.